Welcome to uh, Runtime Dependencies in AL. What? Hey, I'm Eric. And um, as the title says, today we're going to play with Runtime Dependencies, which doesn't really exist in AL. Uh, so how do we get around that? But let's let's actually let's actually first talk about what is a dependency at all. Uh, the, and the easiest way is for me to jump in here. So this is this is an app. This is the app file, and the fundamentals in AL is that you can only use tables and objects, whatever it is that the system knows about. And the only way to know about something is to have a dependency to it. Um, Microsoft always cheating. That's how it goes. So they uh, they are the first party and they have first party privilege and they pay the bill. Um, so to get dependency on Microsoft stuff, you just need to specify a platform and an application and then you get uh, you get all the usual suspect marks on application, base application, business foundation, system application, and system. Excellent. If you need a, a dependencies to something else, you have to specify it in dependencies. Um, and, and that's great. Apart from one tiny issue is that then your app will only install on a system where all the dependencies are fulfilled. Uh, which you can say, hey, that, that's kind of how it goes. And it is. Um, but what if we have a case where you kind of want to make it optional? So so if an app is there, let's use it. If um, an app is not there, then let's not use it. Uh, so how do we do that? And the reason for this, as with you know, all my all my videos, it's about something that somehow occupies uh, part of my brain uh, this week. And uh, I'm working on on one of my apps, a new one. Uh, and part of that, there is a you know, there is a fraction of the users who will use. A, a, a corner of this app and in that corner a fraction of that is an option to upload a file to SharePoint so we have a fraction of a fraction that might do something uh, so I have the SharePoint connector app a wonderful app uh, but it's not a universal app that it's everywhere right there are a few tenants around the world who still not are using the SharePoint connector and if they choose to use this new app, I'm not going to force install the SharePoint connector with them just to serve the fraction of a fraction. Um, but I would like that if the fraction of the fraction wants to upload a SharePoint file and the SharePoint connector happens to be there, the functionality will be available. So how do we do that? Um, and that's the kind of what we need to figure out in this video. Uh, so the option is not for me to put the SharePoint connector into dependencies here and then write two lines of code, uh, because that would be too easy. No, so the option we need to follow is to use the, the dynamic construct that we have in the language. Um, but but let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We, we need some way to call this. So I'll quickly create, oh, what about the parentheses here? Caption, Kiptoni, upload to SharePoint, application, wow. What about I do a add, add first processing. See now suddenly the the application intelligence will work. Okay, so trigger on action. So we need something to upload. So the, the, I think the, the easiest way just to do report dot save as 
we'll do report item list and the second parameter to save as is parameters we don't need that for an item list format report format colon pdf and the next parameter is an outstream then i think we're done so we need an outstream so we'll create an outstream but outstream needs to be connected to something so let's create a temp blob temp blob and then we can go here and say temp blob create outstream so remember the the weird naming with the with streams is that an outstream is something that you put things into and an in-stream is something you get things out of. Uh, so you can write to an outstream and you can read from an in-stream. Uh, it's just how it is. And there is a video somewhere on the channel way back in the uh, in, in the COVID days that it's called In Out Confusing Directions, something like that. Uh, check that out. That's that's fun. After you subscribe, remember to subscribe. Uh, anyway, now we do have a um a report in a template that's what we want to upload um but normally i would then go in in i'll create a a variable called sharepoint i would do sharepoint uh efq and then you know i'll do sharepoint dot upload file and uh, do that thing but we can't do that because we don't know we we don't know this code unit um but what we can do is that we can actually still call a code unit that's not a problem code unit to run and you know i know the guy who made the sharepoint connector so i know that there's a code unit called 70319499 that one is a simplified upload a file uh, code unit um, but it does take a parameter uh, and normally the parameter is a um, there is a upload parameter something but still we don't have that so we can't really do that but what we can do is that we can at least pass because you know, here we need to pass a record but there is actually a weird overload in many, not all, but many functions where instead of passing a record, you can pass what is known as a variant. A variant is this weird type, which is not really a type, it's like a, a holder of a value. And it can hold a, hold a record. Uh, let me actually type the palm bar here. So somehow we need to get our parameter record into into this variant uh, but we still we can't create the record but we can create a record ref that points to this so i think we are still allowed to do palm var equal palm ref so in theory now the only things that we need to do is to populate this one and i know the table number again uh it's let me i have some notes here one thirty one nine four nine four that's an easy to remember number and there are some fields uh so field one is a guid field two is a blob field three is file name Field four is a record ID. Field five is the, uh, the, the the table. I'll explain what that I mean by it. Field six is overwrite. So good is good, blob is a blob, find them as a text, record ID is a record ID, table is an integer, and overwrite is a boolean. So in order to populate, so those are the six fields that we need to tell this code unit about so the table is the the host of the record id so where do we want this this field uh, this file to go so in the sharepoint connector you always have some record that is hosting files uh, which is what's connected so if we create a pump field ref so we need to populate all these 
So we can go palm field equal palm ref dot field one, then palm field dot value equal will create GUID. Um, palm field equal palm ref dot field two, palm field dot value equal, oh, it's the blob. So there is a trick with blobs uh, because you cannot, there's no palm field dot create um, in stream. The, the, somehow we never got, and I think you can probably look up on the interweb somewhere. I did a blog post many, many, many moons ago that we, why can we, can, why don't we have a blob ref? Uh, but my sub didn't really do that. They, they, when they needed to support blobs in, in config packages, they kind of made a dirty hack. So we can, what we can do is that we can do temp blob to field ref palm field. And if we look at the code to this one, then we can see that there is some magic going on with value and not value and both, it works. Um, but uh, this works for us. So let's, uh, let's make this, so the two, th three, four, five, Six. So three is the fileness of palm field of value equal YouTube item list PDF. So field four is the record ID of the hosting record. So where we where do we want the file to go? So palm field value in this case is rec dot record ID. So we're on the uh, on the customer list. So in this case, we'll just upload to the customer we're on. Uh, palm field value here is the table number. So this is cost. Well, this is database. Wow, database. <laughs> database customer. And in field six is palm field value equal true. We're totally going to overwrite this. So now we're passing this as a variable. Uh, and, and normally you can actually do exactly what we're doing here to code unit and all the field values will survive but one, which is kind of weird. So the one field that does not survive this transfer is the blob. So what we have to do kind of, and, and so I usually go, go like this and, and your mileage may vary, but I will do palm ref insert I have to know that this table is a temporary table. Uh, and then I will go uh, palm ref dot modify here at the end. Just so we are good database citizens. Um, but the blob, if we, if we don't do this, then all the fields will actually survive into this one and, and be in rec when you, when this one is have its own run trigger. But the blob field will, will be empty. Uh, not sure why, but that's it. So as long as we save it to the to the temporary table, we're good. So in reality, that's a lot of lines. In 14 minutes, 60 lines of code, where we go. Uh, I think we just need to try it out. So before we do that, let's just repeat what we did. So we created a report and stored that in a blob field. Then I opened from this app's perspective, an unknown table uh, as a record ref populated six unknown fields. Uh, hope, I hope I get it right. Uh, six unknown fields with values. Um, and then I call an unknown code unit and pass the unknown record ref package as a, as a, uh, as a variant. What can go wrong? Uh, lots, I tell you, lots. Let's see. Come on, baby. Deploy. Deploy. There you go. Boom.
So I will select, there's a lot of test customers here. I'll select this one. And you can see here, SharePoint seems to be working. We got a kangaroo and we got some tigers. Uh, let's add a raccoon just so we know that SharePoint is running. We add a raccoon, there we go. Let's click on the raccoons. Oh, it's so cute, but they are really annoying when they get in your garbage. Okay, uh, so we're good here. And then we'll find the upload function, which I guess is, is here. Here goes, hold my beer. The report is generating. Boom, that was fast. Haha! -ha! Success! YouTube item list. Let's click on it and see if we got a PDF. We have a PDF of our items. So now we have an app uh, that can use a function from another app that it has no dependencies on. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong here, right? Uh, we we can uh, we can try this again and say so let's switch some field numbers here and upload again right this is compiled everything's good from this app's perspective because everything compiles everything is good um, but now if we go and do this at runtime we still create the report then we get a breakpoint right that hang on now palm field is an integer and we're trying to put a a record ref into the integer which is of course not allowed so lots of stuff can go wrong but but lots of stuff also can go right uh, so now i can service the fraction of a fraction without force installing uh, the SharePoint connector on all those customers who do not need SharePoint, but will still need this other app. Um, and and the fraction of a fraction, they work, and the other ones do not have a uh, an extra app installed. I know that I have set myself up for success by making sure that the SharePoint connector contains an a, a share a code unit that will on run take a parameters and 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 service this exact exact situation and huh, that's weird wow how did that happen um but you can do the same thing if if you know that you have an app that might be needed in some specific cases and you don't want to you know spam the app on the entire world then this is an option at least it's an option for me. Uh, so that was a bit of ale hacking. I think that's more here. So check this video out if you want to see even more ale hacking. And now I need to end this video fast because my nose is itching. So see you there. Take care. Bye.